Yo, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk about a couple of dividends I've received, the Chancellor's recession comments, and also the top movers and fallers within my portfolio, naturally. But today is episode 60. I never thought I'd get this far. I thought I would have squalated this by now. But you know what? Backtrack. For those of you that don't know what squale means, it's a colloquial term for leave. I thought we'd have left this by now. But you know what? We'll keep it going. You know, I appreciate everyone that's joined the journey and showing support. And yeah, we'll just um, we'll just keep doing this every week. I want to at least get to our episode 100, which is what going to be early February sometimes, because we've got about what 30 weeks left of the year, so I can those land. So yeah, early February. We'll probably see, you know, where my portfolio is at by that point. I probably would have taken it through a recession, taken you all through a recession. You'll see me lose half my investment. Um, 2021 might start looking good and then Trump gets re-elected or something, invades China and the world vanishes through World War Three. I don't know what's going to happen. But anyway, if you're new to the channel, like, comment and subscribe. Follow on Instagram at Infant Investors. And if you're new to investing, I'm using a free trade application. It amazes me how many times I get asked, what application is this? I say it at the beginning of every video. The link is there. But I will say it once again. I'm using free trade. The link is in the description and the pinned comment, freetrade.io forward slash infant hyphen investors. Click on the link, sign up, deposit a pound, and you will get a free share worth up to 200 Pounds. Free Trade did a crowdfunding round this week. I did a poll um, in terms of asking you guys if you invested in the, in the round of crowdfunding. And surprisingly, it was like 79% no, 21% yes, which I was very surprised at. But I'm actually assuming that most of you probably had already invested into Free Trade um, in prior rounds as I have done previously as well so you know we will see how well free trade continues to do you know i'm behind it i hope it does very well in the future and um you know i think the good thing is that it's allowed commission free investing to kind of hit our shores and and for a lot of new investors i think that's a really important thing so if you are new to investing in the market a lot of other providers charge you for each trade that you've got to make so you've got to put in a certain amount just to cover the trade cost and then you've got to make a certain amount of profit to really break even which is kind of counterintuitive so you know i like free trade it's commission free it allows you to learn get into the market and hopefully these videos will help you as well and you know you will always do your own research and 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 grow in the market and it's a good time to get in considering a lot of stuff is falling so yeah that is definitely something to consider but first let's get into the top movers and fallers so i will scroll down if i can and i can and the first top mover to talk about is Shopify. So Shopify has gone up 2.22%. I think it's just the time I recorded it. It was about 4% about uh, about a day ago. But let's just go 2.22%. And it's continued to going up towards the left. It's Canada's most valuable company. I never thought I'd see that, to be honest. I thought, you know, Toronto Dominion Bank was second. RBC was first. Shopify was third. I never thought an e-commerce giant would actually be valued higher than a bank the national bank of the com of the country <laughs> but lo and behold i'm even being surprised by a lot of the stuff that's happening so yeah um canada's most valuable company is continuing to soar um the topic of when to sell this stock is definitely coming to my mind so can currently you can see that you know i only made one investment back in october 148 percent return at the current moment and um I'm considering when to sell. I, I think I'm going to hold for the time being. I still think, oh, I did it to watch this. I still think that once we get into the actual technical recession, particularly in the, in the US, um, where people are going to stop and reduce spending, I think that's definitely going to be the time to sell. And I'll try to get out maybe, you know, a week or two or a month or whatever before that period. So, you know, I think anywhere between 150 to 200%, I will be selling at some stage. I don't really know when. But, you know, I think it's going to be wise to take some of this profit off the table. And then obviously if it does fall, um, I will buy back in for the, for the future because I definitely believe in it. So that's probably what's going through my mind at the current moment with Shopify. But yeah, I've not made any decisions about that. So that's continuing to do pretty well. The next one to talk about is Sentiment. Sentiment has gone up 3.7% this week. 
Um, the interesting thing about sentiment is that RBC, <laughs> the same uh, second most valued company in Canada, issued a broker note which basically sent the stock up, 6.2% um, up this week. Um, for those of you that don't know what a broker note, a broker note is quite simply just a research note. It's basically a research paper from a financial professional or a financial institution or a, or a, a financial analyst um, about a specific stock. And it's usually time sensitive information. They basically talk about, you know, what they feel about the stock, you know, what their analysis suggests and, you know, whether it's overweight, underweight, whether it's a buy, whether it's a sell, etc. So RBC's broker note basically said that, you know, they believe that sentiment is one of the best um, opportunities in the UK at the moment. And they believe it will go to um, £1.80. Um, it was actually £1.65 at the time they said that. So you, you can see that the impact that has basically had on the stock this week. Um, and this month's sentiment has gone from strength to strength. I personally um, feel that, you know, regardless of the broker note or, no, or not, just purely based off the correlation between gold and equities and when the equities market is going down gold and commodities bonds etc tend to go up purely based off that i think sentiment is just going to still have quite considerable momentum over the course uh, i'm at 56 percent on sentiment which is pretty decent as well um and i strongly 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 feel as i'll talk about later that we're going to go into a recession so i have no um no intention to sell this at the moment i will continue to ride this unless some company specific information comes out and says otherwise i will definitely continue to hold sentiment so yeah shout out to sentiment the next one to talk about the last top mover is octa and octa um basically has gone up 4.17 percent um it's really strange so you know i talked about earnings updates last week um, a lot of companies don't follow the same earnings updates sh like cadence of say the calendar year sometimes they do it based off the time that they actually launched or they may be doing it something that's relevant to their industry etc so octa's q4 earnings actually ended in january and they announced that in march and that was the most recent earnings that they mentioned so february to april is their quarter one so they'll probably announce it roughly around july and we'll see how well Octa's gonna potentially do. And barring a tragedy, I don't really, tragedy, tragedy. Barring a tragedy, remember that from Steps, was it Steps, yeah? <laughs> Escort, S Club 7, one of them, one of them. Anyway, barring a tragedy, I don't really see any negative news really hitting Octa at this current moment. Um, they are obviously pretty overvalued at this current moment, um, but they're doing well in terms of revenue and a lot of gross stocks defy a lot of the traditional valuation metrics as we mentioned before. Um, and obviously the COVID situation has actually helped the business rather than hindered the business, unlike other companies from different sectors and so forth. So, you know what, I, I expect it to continue to rise and, you know, I probably would would rather hold on to this and wait until um their next earnings update to make a call on what i'm going to do with this current stock currently up 66 percent, so it wouldn't be unwise to sell but i think i'm just going to hold on to this for the time being definitely won't be adding no mon more money to it um that that i can assure you i feel like i bought it at a decent price um and i, I think now it's, it's pretty high so it's all about a case of either holding or selling for me but um i still think it's a good business again i bought one share or one round of shares rather and um and yeah we'll see what happens with that if we go into the top fallers what i'm going to do i'm going to bucket all of these top fallers in one go because i think there's a strong correlation with the reason why all of these have fallen so the first top fall i'm going to talk about is legal in general and as you can see from the seven day graph it's gone down 9.6 percent on a month not so bad because it had a bit of a rise before because of the whole dividend situation but yeah it's fallen 9.6 percent which is which is quite considerable the next top fall is to talk about all in one go i have to move over to the basic side so whilst that while that's loading you guys know i've only got two stocks in my basic account um and that is british land and land sex so um in terms of that the first one, British Land, you can see here has gone down 12.86%. So, I mean, that's just, just well, we'll get into why that is. And Landsec, 17.24%. Um, and it goes to the second thing I wanted to talk about in today's video, which is the Chancellor's headline comments on we will very likely go into a recession. So, you know, this quarter um, 
he's predicting worse economic growth than the previous quarter. In the previous quarter, quarter one, we went down 2.3%, a negative GDP decline. For those of you that don't know what a recession is or a technical recession, it's basically two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. And so the first quarter, we went down 2.3%. The, the next quarter will be announced in a couple of months, uh, probably actually around July, August sometime. Um, but obviously we're in it at the moment. So, so because of everything that's happening, I think the prediction is quite high that we will definitely have the second consecutive quarter and um, we'll go into a recession. So, you know, I think that's quite no news, but I, I do kind of think back to the times when I never used to invest in a stock market and I would just hear about the recession at the time the recession kind of happened. So I think when these headlines are coming out, it is definitely sending panic to a lot of people and people are deciding that, you know, maybe maybe I should just sell or liquidate. Um, and, you know, some people would have made profit right now. You don't know when they bought and some people would have probably just cut their losses as well. The Bank of England also mentioned, which is quite significant. I think this is probably even more significant than the Chancellor's comments that he expects a 14 percent decline across the whole of 2020 which obviously means that we would be in a recession for quite a considerable amount of time um, and so this year is pretty much a write-off is the way I kind of receive um, that information um, and the positive if you want to call it that which is more forecast so it's not really a positive is that he they would expect this is the Bank of England again a 15 percent rise in 2021 so basically in short this quarter is going to be crap the next two quarters will be crap and then in 2021 everything will come back go back to normal and everything will rise again um, and people will start to make money we will see what actually happens from that perspective the second reason why you know specifically these two REITs have done pretty badly um, is because they're housing related REITs um, and there's a lot of information coming out about a current housing crisis that's looming within the UK um, so house prices are obviously falling. If house prices are falling, then that obviously means valuations are falling. Um, and a lot of banks and different financial institutions have predicted that they can fall as much as 10% throughout the course of the year. So quarter one has been quite bad because, you know, due to lockdown, there's been no viewings. If there's no viewings, people aren't going to be purchasing houses. That's obviously happened throughout a little bit of quarter two, but it looks like viewings are starting to, to take place and open up. That being said, if we are going to go into a recession, you're going to have people nervous about buying property and people nervous about making any real significant purchases. Um, and so that sentiment alone is is definitely directly correlated with the housing market. And, you know, basically meaning that valuations of any property based business will fall. This will include REITs. This will include house builders. Um, and so obviously this is probably, I think, correlated with why these um, housing related REITs have obviously um, dropped quite significantly. Um, and then there's a lot of estimations. Again, I think this one was from Morgan Stanley that they don't expect this to basically go back up until about 11 months from now. So again, we're looking at a 2021 forecast for things to return back to pre-COVID situation. So, you know, I think the overall sentiment from everything that I've kind of mentioned at this current moment is that, you know, it's looking very, very likely. And again, this is just, you know, what I'm inferring from the from the information that I'm reading. I'll put all of those links in the description as well from the BBC, Metro, CEM, et cetera, et cetera. But from everything that I'm basically um, inferring and reading, it, it seems like, you know, a recession is extremely, extremely likely. You know, you've got some people arguing that we're already in a recession. And I think based off the volumes, we talked about this, technically that is kind of true. But I think, um, well, I guess morally it's true, but technically it's not just due to the fact that, you know, the actual technical definition hasn't been achieved. But it looks it's looking very likely that that will be achieved. And I think once those headlines are there every single day, every single week, um, once obviously, you know, there'll be probably more job losses, there'll be probably more of a of a negative impact to society, um, you know, we're probably going to see a lot more downturns. So I think it's a very volatile time right now. Some people think this is actually the best time to get into the markets. If you are new to investing, you know, I would always refer back to some of my previous videos, which talks about you know having your emergency fund having a certain level of savings making sure that whatever you invest you don't mind losing obviously i don't want to lose all the money that i'm investing but you are you know able to be confident that if something was to downturn and you started to see 30 40 50 percent in the red then you wouldn't panic and you've got the ability to potentially buy more so you know putting those risk measures in place is extremely extremely important so 
The next thing I want you to talk about is two dividends I've received. The first dividend was from SEMB, so this is my monthly dividend pay, and I received three pound thirteen, which just basically pays for my ISA. So we just keep that one there for the time being. The next dividend I received was from one of the top movers, which is Sentiment, and Sentiment paid f uh, me a dividend of sixty one pounds and ninety five pence. <laughs> Um, which is a decent dividend amount and I'm expecting my legal in general and a few other dividends that were there before you know the next round of cuts to be um, decent amounts as well which which always helps as long as you reinvest that money and compound it for wealth I think that definitely always helped I, I received a DM from, from one of my guys actually I, I, one of the followers for the channel for quite some time so I, I definitely you know rate him a lot um, and he said you know I helped him buy sentiment and now he's received his first dividend from sentiment etc Listen, as good as all that is, you know, my personal take, and I, and I will say this for all of the new people that have joined to the channel because, you know, last week I've had probably the most new subscribers. So that's why I'm calling it out. Any purchases you guys make is your call. Like, I, all I can do is just talk about my portfolio and just let you know my thinking and my decision making for my own money. But I'm definitely not advising you guys what to do. You know, my expectation is that you guys see this as, you know, a form of education ideally a form of entertainment more more so maybe edutainment um but but naturally you always do your own research on the stocks that you feel is beneficial and i really should just be thought provoking that like it just should, should trigger you to think about oh maybe i should look into this sector or to this market or to this type of stock and you know do your own research on what to buy so listen if you buy any stocks that i can't really hold um and you make money from it or dividends or make a return that's all you man that's all you so you know shout out to you for doing that uh, it's partly why i don't really do those you know these are the three best stocks to buy today like just because it's kind of advice although those videos do get more views if you look at my best dividend series that's starting to come out the views on that is just it's just skyrocketing that's probably where a lot of the new investors are coming from so you know i might have to rethink that strategy anyway listen in other news of why the market has been so volatile this week um as you can see from the seven day graph is germany technically is in a is in a recession i'll leave the link in the description i'm not going to go too deeply into it but quite simply they revised their quarter four figures which was a recession and their quarter one figures so they're technically in a recession apparently um the u.s new stimulus bill has been approved by a vote and so you know we're expecting that Donald Trump will sign that and there'll be a new wave of about three trillion dollars going into the US economy which um, is probably definitely going to prop up a lot of these US stocks and businesses um, people call it funny money basically when you just keep on putting money into the economy pumping money to the economy um, in order to kind of stimulate or maintain levels of growth and you know I do think that's partly have had an impact with um, you know US stocks pretty much all being in a green and UK stocks pretty much all being in a red however I still stand by my comments of last week which you know caused some interesting debate I still think there is just a general um, I guess stronger momentum behind us stocks and i think there's a lot of reasons for that um we mentioned the uk economy generally speaking um i mentioned obviously a lot of the, the growth stocks and the tech stocks being in the usa you know you've got a fact that most of the people in the world that are investing they're not investing in legal in general do you know what i mean let's just be honest they're going to be investing in tesla they're going to be investing in apple they're going to be investing in a lot of us companies so you know it's just it's just not unreasonable the fact that more money will be pouring into the US um, as a whole and obviously if other parts of the world aren't so affected um, then they're going to be putting money into the US in order to try and generate a bit of a return um, when prices do fall and when prices rise they're just going to be greedy and trying to be chasing a little bit of that momentum so either way I just think US kind of has a little bit of, a, of an advantage um, from a stock market perspective naturally though that doesn't mean as it might have been misinterpreted, I'm going to sell all my UK stocks. But what I did say, and I stand by, is I will I will reduce my UK holdings to probably about four or five, which is what I mentioned last week. Um, the ones that I, I believe in, regardless of whether it goes up or down. Um, and yeah, and I think I'm definitely going to try and reduce my holdings over the, the near term. And as free trade release a lot more UK, US stocks, there's some there that you know I've always wanted, even before I was. Um, you know before i was actually investing in these ones because they just weren't available so that's going to be something that i'm going to definitely consider in more news as well the uk and eu brexit talks isn't going so well um i just feel like that topic was something that we talked about in great lengths last year and it just seems like that's coming back so who knows 
overall it's looking grim out there housing crisis recessions here recession there um you know brexit talks it's all the same basically so you know if you are new to investing again you know i wanted to just to kind of take this as an opportunity to, to speak directly to you you know i've got videos on beginner steps for investing i've got videos on how to invest a hundred pounds etc you know i'm very very um i'm very very hot specifically on managing your risk and making sure that you've got your emergency fund you've got savings in place before you even dip into the market um, because it can be a volatile place and obviously when you are new it does hurt to see you know percentages fall certain times and so forth and so forth so you know me personally I'm I'm pretty numb to it because I've been doing it for quite some time and before this I was trading as well um, and in fact I've actually been trading this week so I'm probably going to do a video next week on making money when the market's going down because I've been shorting certain things and, and making money on the market going down so yeah smash a like on this video if you want to see that video i'll probably do it some point during the early part of this week but yeah that's it really for today i um, hope you found this video useful if you did like comment subscribe and i will catch you next time with another investment video take care peace